another video from NGL um, amplifiers today not guitar lessons and today we have another one of these Bush RP20s on the bench and also Pink who's having a wash this one is a slightly later model than the previous ones we've looked at which were the red ones with the beige um, with the beige matching on the top there so now we've got dysentery beige vinyl and then chocolate brown on there you can see that slightly later models the uh, the kind of skim more and more as they go along so the vinyls replace the tweed you can see on there it's just uh, so that's been replaced the bush badge and uh, i think i did cover this at the end of the last last video we did on that other rp20 so I usually take the bush badge off and drop it on the front there. Now we've got separate letters, so that could be challenging. As I say, later model, if we look on this cap, and I don't know whether we can actually see it because light tends to shine off these aluminium caps. November 1960 is the date on that. So this was probably made in 1961, where the others I've worked on were made in 1957. Well, chassis is the same, as you can see, if we just hone around there. On the top there you can see the chassis is still the same pretty much and a good base to work from a uh, bit of strange this is the actual preamp valve and the uh, electrolytic <laughs> sits at the side of it and sits at the side of the output transport uh, output transformer as well so not really where you want to have your main electrolytic capacitor that will be going uh, as it did on the others and we generally revamp these just rip out everything and just use the chassis we, we keep the valve we kept the valve seats on the last one uh, ebc81 which i think we used on the last one as well but then we drilled another socket out there and put in um what did we put in there i can't remember now on the other one oh, a terrible memory but we put another tube in there anyway and then we've got the output tube uh, socket there and we've got the EZ80 which we'll be keeping as well uh, but I've had a bit of a brainwave on this one what I wanted to do is build a 5C1 champ into this now the 5C1 is the early version of the champ um, which has a 6SJ7 pentode preamp valve and I've actually got some Russian valves which we'll have a look at in a minute which will do the job and they're also metal cased because the very early valves were obviously metal cased not glass so if we look underneath you can uh, i don't know whether I've, i don't think i've ever shown one of these before before it's actually i think i'd ripped most of the gubbins out of the other one when i started videoing it so if we look you can see just uh, just do a bit of a fly past you can see inside voltage selector there going on to the power transformer you can see most of that going on in there all of that will be coming out if we made this into a 5c1 then obviously some drilling is required if we just hold that there that's it so i'm trying to film it move it with the other hand so we'd have to drill that out for an octal not a problem there what if we were to put a 6v6 in it there we could do that and drill out that and I think we just about get that there is a couple of other options we could use in it um, EL84 we could use in there and we could also use um, 6AQ5 in there we'd have to change that socket because they're a miniature type socket but we could probably use one of those as well and the effective load resistance for the output transformer on those is pretty similar they're all pretty close those valves probably around about 5k on there i would have thought prime on the um primary so let's have a look at the schematic for um for a 5c1 so here's a 5 5c1 schematic you can see there so if we just Hone in, you can see we've got that 6SJ7 tube there. We could fit that quite easily. So if we go across, we've got a 6B6 there. It'd be nice if we could find a, a metal case, one of those as well, make it a bit more authentic. Let's just put in a little volume and tone 
uh, network in there. So and then we just bias it, use the same um, bias resistor may well be different because we've got different voltages. And we've got down here, we have eight, what's that, eight? Eight and eight on there, and eight again by the look of it. We could up those a bit as well. Tend to get a bit of hum sometimes, so we could we could up those a bit as well. 5Y3, well we use that EZ80. That's going to be near enough. We never, I mean, we're never going to get it exact, you know, to the ad absolute letter because of what we're putting it in. But I think that would work quite well. So here's this uh, Russian two bar we're talking about. So you can see that on there, which equates to six. It's upside down, sorry. <laughs> which is six uh, J eight. So let's open it up and have us. A butcher's at it. Where's the lid? Let's try the other side. That looks more like it. So I'll try and open this one handed. And it's not easy. So let's just uh, tip that out gently onto there. So there we have it. So this is an, egg, an equivalent of a 6SJ7. Right, I've got this thing uh, out of its case and off the board that the turntable were mounted on. We need to get rid of uh, most of this gubbins in here. The pots need to go, both of those. We need to get rid of all of this electrolytic and we'll just be left with the, really the valve seats. We're keeping this mains cable. Oh, sorry there we go keeping this uh, power cable there so we're going to use that again because it's in good order these are wires go down to the um, output transformer which is there you can see some of those going through there which are mounted onto this this will all be taken out and then we'll just solder them straight straight onto the lugs there you can see we'll just do that oops then we will mount the board somewhere in this area like we did on the last ones we're gonna drill that base out for an octal with the Christmas tree drill bit as it's called not still not sh we're gonna use that EZ80 re rectifier still not sure what we're gonna do with the output valve yet Here's the board. I actually said the board was going um, on the face. It's actually not. It's going on the end there. So that will go that way. The and you can see I've bent already bent these down for the electrolytics. So those will go there on that. So we'll mount that board there. Um, next job we've got to look at is drilling that out most of the stuff's out now main stuff that we need out of the way um, I've cunningly left those um, bias resistors there um, well, that looks a bit loose doesn't it but I've cunningly left those because we may be able to make use of those if we decide not to remove that socket and put a 6B6 in but we probably will Right, I have got a bit further with this project. I've got the uh, the board in, tag board in there. Now I'll just show you how I've done that. So I've used, I'm just going to hone in, I've used these nylon uh, bolts uh, because of passing components over here and no risk of sh uh, shorting to ground. So I've used those. We stood them off. Uh, sorry, look at that there. We can just see down there. We've made some stanchions to stand it off the chassis. I've just used a couple of uh, M4 because they're M4 bolts. A couple of metal M4s under there to stand those off. And then I've used the nylon ones on the back there to tighten it up. Uh, and what I've done is I've put a super glue in there and then nipped them up and a bit of super glue on top they'll never come out and there's no reason for that to come out really so 
do you once it's in there it's sad the other thing i've done is the octal base which has turned out pretty good so we've got him in there turn that over there you can see he's a winner the output valve conundrum now is the thing that remains what we're going to do with that we've got a few options there we could put an el84 in um but i'm not keen on that that's what came out of it not in this particular project we could bore it out bore the hole out for a octal base and put a 6v6 in which would be period correct for this project that we're doing um pinks at the door can hear a shout to come in so i'm just going to open the door yes, and you can hear her now she's coming in for the horse comes when i'm videoing so just as if she knows i can actually see her down there on the floor holding round so yeah back to this so yeah we could put a smaller valve base in and put in a 6aq5 which is a beam tetro valve which is same as a 6v6 but in a smaller bottle so most people tell me but i've also got some russian valves that are um beam tetrodes and i'm going to fetch one of those out of the house we're going to have a newsy at it yeah pink's here again as soon as i start filming here comes pink and we just see her there she's examining the goods so here are the goods so this is 6p1p this valve and i've got the data sheet for it here so these are a russian beam tetrode valve these are very good valves i've got i bought a hundred of these because i'm daft like that and you can see they're all wrapped up i'll just take one out of here so you can see they all wrapped up nicely so that is a possibility to go in for a number of reasons one is it's a beam tetra two is i've got shit loads of them <laughs> and um uh, three i don't have to <coughs> i don't have to drill out that hole um that valve seat take that out and drill that out and mess about so so let's have a bit of a power yeah, sorry about that that's pink just juffing the camera yeah so maybe she's telling me i should be using the 6v6 so you can see some of the data here but you may not be able to for much longer because pink's going to sit on it because she knows we're looking at it 250 volt um looks like we get about 250 volts on the plate uh, and the screen but they only usually a guide with Russian tubes and I don't think we've got much more than that anyway and what else 12 watts dissipation you can see that there um, I think that LED lights affecting the camera again so I'm just going to swing it away a little bit yeah so 12 watt, 12 uh, watts dissipation going on there which is ideal for what well plenty for what we want here's the interesting part if you get pink gets a foot off it so grid 2 power 2.5 watts normally only 2 watts on an EL84 so these oops sorry about that shadows these are uh, quite good valves let me just hone that out of the way get rid of those lines so so we've got this um that's what basically there what it says about it in english the other side of that is russian but we don't read that so you can all read that if you want to know more about it and let's have a look at page two so it's not the page that we want so and i think yeah, i'm right in this resistance anode 5k I think resistance anode is 5.2k for an EL84, so that is near enough for me. So just gonna have a nosy at this power supply on this 5C1 diagram. Um, so we've got got two eights there and an eight and a 500 ohm resistor between those. Um, it's almost like they're in uh, parallel, being bumped up to 16. So what I did, I downloaded, oops, sorry about that, I downloaded the um, 
5F1 schematic slightly later, you see here we've got 16 microfarad there, we've got an 8 and an 8, and that's pretty clear what's going on there. That one is uh, going to the output transformer, onto the plate, that one's going to the screen, and that one's doing the preamp valve. So I think we're going to go with this layout of the power supply and then the rest of the actual amp on here. 5 meg uh, grid leak. Um, boy, have I had a problem trying to locate one of those. So what I've decided, what I've done, I've bought um, some 10 megs uh, in, and they're in half watts. Don't really buy half watt resistors, but I'm just going to put two of them in parallel and that'll, that'll give us 5 meg. So that should do for that. 10 microfarad at 450, that'll do for the, got two of those, one for the screen and one for the uh, preamp valve. And we're going to use a, um, we're on the wrong diagram again there, the 5F1. Let's go on to the other one there, and we're going to use a 22 instead of that 16 there. So you can see I've made some progress. Now, um, we've got the electrolytics in, and then the drop in resistors, we've got um, 10k and 22k there. Um, so we've got, we've used a couple of these, you can see I've tied all this up together, so we've got a really good physical connection and then soldered them. So they're really solid, to be honest, they were solid before I soldered them, so we've got those cooking we have uh, got some components in here we've got some capacitors in there uh, we've got a 0.5 for the uh, for the pentode for the screen on the pentode to, to cathode to ground um, 22 nanofarad um, capacitor which goes in series with a grid stopper stop any DC leaking onto the guitar because I think those six SJ7s, I think that is one of the problems with them. I'm sure I read that somewhere. We've got another 22, and that's the coupling cap that goes from the uh, preamp to the power amp valve. So that's all coming along nicely. Um, dropping resi uh, plate resistor in there as well. Um, screen resistors, feed resistors arrive this morning. Then the output valve so we decided we were going to use the, that russian uh, 6 6 p um, 6 p6 or something 6 1 p6 i'm terrible i forget these things but it's kicking about somewhere but you've seen it so you know which valve it is now there's very, some very interesting things going on with that uh, with a pin out on that so you've actually got two anodes and two screens uh, terminals so pins one and two um, are anode and screen with two. So I have shrink wrapped these there, as you can see. Um, I might be able to just zoom in a little bit on that and have a look where the zoom is, or can we now? So I'm just using this new do for it, so we can't, but we can certainly hold the camera down a little closer. So you might be able to see if I just pull this back there you can see that there and there i put some shrink tubing on those now the reason for that is is that obviously they're going to be live and somebody could come in here and assume that they're no connection um and end up uh, getting a nasty shock off them so i've just put that to uh, have i shrink to them so they they're safe we're just a concern really and also if they get pushed down onto the the um uh, onto the chassis they'll obviously they'll ground out and there will be a bit of a bang so that's that sorted out and that's wired up now um, so notice that we've got this single wire to the heaters at the moment for that six oh sorry you would have saw that if i stopped tilting it um, and in fact i'm going to tilt it that way and get it under the light so you can see that heater wire there now the heaters from the uh, right from the EZ80 rectifier valve uh, through to this 
um, output valve uh, you can see that there they grinded um, and that's how they, they are on these Bush record players uh, and to be fair they're the quietest single ended amp that I've ever used so I've tended to leave those so I'm going to grind this one if it's noisy then I'll have to just wind the filament wires but I'm going to go with how I've done all the others because it's worked fine so I've put this um, connector in here and it is proper solid connected on the mains and I've got a main switch in there got an HT fuse that's what I forgot to put in when we, when I put it all together and I just I thought oh, I've done all that now I've just got the AC to do I thought you're not for a, a HT fuse in it's a bit of a regular trick that is so I'll put that in now so we've got that um, so that's sorted I've got it all together and I'm just going to go through a bit what I'm going to do here so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to fire it up without any valves and just do some testing just to see what we've got um, what voltages we've got making just to make sure that everything is safe before we put the tubes in and start drawing any current these wires that you can see here trailing they are for the switch which will be up in the in the, the lid of the actual uh, case so what I've done is from the coupling capacitor from that um, preamp valve uh, to the uh, grid on the output valve I've just jumped it straight through for the time being because what, what I want to do is run it up and bias it and then once it's biased and all done then I can focus on putting the tone stack in afterwards when I'm doing all the cabinet um, because obviously the volume control again is going to be on the volume and tone are going to be on the top of the cabinet so that is that will be job 39b now I've got I've also I've jumped in a 560 ohm uh, cathode uh, sorry 560 ohm yeah cathode bias resistor because we're going to start with that I've got a couple of meters so I've got one meter on the bias um, which and now I'm going to lift this up near there to see those so I've got one meter on the bias oops shook that in a bit and one meter which I'm going to use on the to go through the the DC on the various stages of the power supply uh, and I've got the old variac in the corner there so we're going to fire that variac up um, and I'm going to now I'll probably not get no bias well, we won't get no bias because we've got no tubes in no output to actually I need the rectifier tube in don't I so let's just see what we get in first of all so I'll put I'll just put 14 volts on there let's see if we're getting anything and we have got some DC there so we've got 29 volts of DC so we've got something coming in that's good so I'm just going to go off and find a rectifier tube right we've got a rectifier tube in Uh, is that poking a little? So it is going up, and I have got 70 volts on the um, Variac. You can see that is slowly going up now. And now we have got some voltage there, so not a deal three volts so that is now conducting so let's see what's coming is anything coming in here yep 37 on there we should have the same on there but yeah it's coming up all the time so we'll keep going increase readings uh, what's going on there yeah we've got voltage there yeah 60 volts now so we're getting voltage through Right, let's try this plate resistor. Yep. Screen resistor. Screen resistor. Yep. So we've got voltage all the way through. So we know we've got voltage and we've got no shorts. So we'll flick that off. Now. We need to be very careful because of those capacitors will be charged so we've got to be careful when we're handling this. I'm going to put the uh, 
the output valve in, the 6P1P, ka -ching. So we'll put him in. Right. Let's give it a go. So we'll hone, hone something on the variac. Let's go to the 70 volts that we had. I think it's just blasted through the door. Just uh, jump up on the bench behind me. The moment of truth. Will it go bang? Or will it work? Look at that. That's come up. Ah, that's why I haven't got no voltage there. The uh, grounds fell off. The oh, the meter grounds not on. Yep. And we've got 201 volts, and I've got 178 on the variac, so we're not fully up there. I've got 22 on the bias, 22 volts on the bias, which seems to be coming down. So the bias is on that meter, by the way. If you're not, if you're looking, um, should have explained that before. Bias is on that one, and this one is uh, regular as clockwork. And the uh, even oh sorry yeah just all right I was just thinking I'd done something there I thought oh I've been a bit of a knob there but now I haven't so I've got 210 volts on there and we have got sound at the speaker so you should be able to hear that in a minute it's pretty quiet as these amps are so let's run it up a little more so now we're at 188 volts we've got 225 on the first node that voltage now has gone is that going down or up on that bias what we got on the second node Gee, it's not even microphonic is it <laughs> if it's working properly well, we can find out if it is in a minute so 177 volts we've got on the, th the second node Third node, we've got 167. So what have we got? The other end of that plate resistor. 91. 91. And 17 volts on the screen. I was not sure about that, but that's we should get a bit more though when we turn this up. So let's go up to full tilt, madam. Hmm. So that's full tilt. Hmm. I have a feeling something. So we've got two hundred and ninety volts. That's swaying around. Bias has dropped down now. It's gone off gone up again we got now 208 teeth that's coming down now so we must be getting more conduct let's just see what was causing that oh that's how I make the jump then did not it <laughs> I say Holmes hmm I don't quite know what that is well, it's running. Let's just see if we've got anything on the um, on the screen. Yep. 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 That seems to be working. quiet not quite sure what that's about right so got it running we did have a bit of a problem earlier and I realized that I hadn't um, I hadn't got a grid leak resistor to ground on the output valve and that's what we're causing the problems but we've sorted that so you can see now 
Um, I've got second the left meters not running but the the want the meter on the right we just zoom in that is the bias bias voltage seven what 17 17.7 17 there it has crept up a little bit now um so it's all up and running but we did some uh, i did some figures on that bias and it comes out at 7.6 watts which is too low especially for me because you know I like to bias these at 100% so what I've actually done here to get this running and the reason I've had to do this is that the controls will go on the lid on the rim of the record player lid and I have to run all the the screens up there so and we're putting a tone stack in this which we're going to be able to switch in and switch out so we, we've we've got to run all the wires up there and it's so awkward then when you've got this off in the case off not in the case and then you've got to start biasing it up so what i've done is we're coming off the coupling capacitor with this there you can see me moving that we're coming off the coupling capacitor there is no volume that great lid that uh, grid leak resistor there is going to ground but you can see that one meg that chap there and then we're going across that wire and we're going onto the grid of that of the output valve so we can bias it up uh, and it's, it's actually flat out at the moment because there's no volume on it so and if we go down here to where the um, the grid is there you can see and I've only got that on a little speaker which is on the desk there just to test it so this is purely to bias it this is why I've got this set up like this so let's have a look at some figures that we've just done and you might have known wouldn't you <laughs> that, that has the book that we've written the figures on and someone I think we're being held to ransom here basically if we don't come up with some dreamies or some cat treats uh, we're not getting the uh, oh no we might be lucky oh yes we are lucky so there we go that's a bit of a let off for us so what we've got down here is um we've got a 560 ohm resistor you know 17.5 volt drop 258 plate cathode we deducted five percent for the screen 7.6 watts dissipation so that's what we've got that's too low so we need to find no you don't oh dear she was going to jump don't jump on there there's high voltage dear oh dear pink you can't take your eyes off her for a second you mustn't jump on there sweetheart so we need to find where was i so we need to find a, a smaller bias resistor there's pink She's in one of her moods, aren't you, Pink? Yes, she's in one of her moods, so anything could happen. But we do have to watch her with the high voltage, because she's quite. She's got it in her mind. She wants to go on that bench, and we could. I'm afraid she will get a severe electrocution if she jumps into that amplifier. Oh, and she sat back on the book again. So you're not playing ball. If I can't go on your bench. I'm staying on this bench and I'm going to sit on your figures. So, put a 200 ohm resistor in there now and we've got about 10 volts on the bias. So we'll do some figures, some testing. I've not got this on the tripod, so I'm going to switch this off to do them. And then we'll see what we've got, what voltages we've got. Right, so that 200 ohm resistor measured at 195 ohms. So volts drop is 10.09 divided by 195. That's come out at 51 milliamps. Take away 5%. Uh, percent. That leave, that's for the screen current so that leaves us 49 times 235 plate voltage equals 11.55 that is near enough for me 
I always bias my amps at 100%. And the, sound, the reason I bias them at 100% is because of the sound. They sound great. They don't sound as good when, they, when cathode bias does not sound good when it's biased at 70%. But it's up to other people what they bias their amps at. But that's what I bias mine at. And no doubt some people will put things in the comments. Um, but some most techs recommend that you bias them at 100%. Um, to me biasing sacrificing your sound to get years and years out of your valves it's a bit like ripping all the seats and everything that's that's in your car to make it lighter so your tires last longer tires wear out and so do valves but they don't wear out like in six months if you bias them at 100 percent if you start biasing over that um then obviously they are they're not going to last as long but they'll run comfortable at 100 percent and that's what we've got near enough 11.5 but it's a 12 watt dissipation that's 6p 1p so we have got 11.5 and that will be good enough for us so now that it's biased we'll uh, we'll solder that resistor in and it jobs a squirrel right bias this the, the, the bias resistor soldered in there i've just lifted it slightly off the board so that is that and now that is running and now i'm ready for um so getting the cabinet sorted out the the controls whatever else that we're doing in there so there we have it that's all done and, and finished and i've done that in a couple of days really so i'm quite impressed with that um for a re I wouldn't call myself a professional as you know I do this for a hobby um, I don't repair amps for other people so please don't contact me on on the channel and ask me to repair your amp or send me any amps because I don't repair amps there's plenty of techs out there that repair amps um, this is my hobby um, yeah I'm proficient at it and everything I do is really safe and i take my time to make them safe but at the end of the day i'm a i'm a musician and a teacher i'm not a tech so if you want to get your amp repaired find a tech um, so that way i'm not robbing all their work which is fair so so there we are so that that will end it for this part one um and then part two will be us doing the cabinet um i hope you've enjoyed me going through this project blundering on and I will see you in part two. So you all take care and I'll see you soon. Bye bye.